Lido. Hi. Hello. So nice to talk to you. Likewise. How's your day been going so far? You've you had know. a pretty crazy week. Full of press, uh, meeting amazing people, and talking about the best show in the world. The best show. Colito TV. Yes. I had a chance to see a couple episodes. It's I don't even know how to describe it because I just feel like it's so unique in what it is. And I think you just have to see it to, to really understand it. Um, but I, I want to talk about the fact that it premiered at TIFF this week. How is that experience for you? I never thought that it was possible for a digital show to be premiering at TIFF. But then when they told us the news, I basically said, feels correct. Yeah. This is exactly what needs to happen because somebody must be doing their job at TIFF that they can recognize true talent. Right. So yeah, it feels correct. Yeah, you are like a natural host of the show as well. You just do such a fantastic job. Can you talk about the inspiration behind how the show started? Yeah, all of it. Well, the, the puppets are inspired in my kids. Oh, okay. I always say I should have cameras around me all the time because my life is like a movie. Because I have three kids mm -hmm. um, and they're very different. And um, when the pandemic started and I couldn't go on tour and I just released my album, I said, you know what? I'm like my kid's personal clown. I could do this in front of a camera. And then I got together with my collaborators um, at the BBB Collective, Andres Landau and Gustavo Cerquera. I got approached by Sean O'Neill at Visitor Media and they said, you have great ideas, we want to support you. And they taught me how to write a pitch and they taught me about a writer's room. And then C, um, CBC Gem, they were like, you know what, we would love to host you. And we said yes, and then the rest is in development because we are not dropping yet, but with the premiere at TIFF, a lot of people have seen the clips, mm -hmm. a lot of people have seen the episodes, and the comment that we've received the most is, there's nothing out there like this, exactly. you know? So, um, which, you know, I feel like, it's like me, like, I am like my own turmoil of whatever arty ideas and visions and hopes and dreams. And I think that Lido TV is an expression of that. Yeah. How did you pitch that to friends like Nelly Furtado and Bear from Hallucination? Like, how did you come to them with that? I, well, with Nelly, um, she knew I was doing the show and we were working on some music. And she just dropped me off on the set one day and she came to see it. And she loved it and she was like, girl, I can be a part of this. And I'll, yes, yes, Miss Nelly Furtado, the icon, the legend, yes, yeah. yes. And we got her uh, on and Bear, he's a very close friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Shad's a very close friend of mine. Basically, when I knew that the show was happening and we thought and we knew what the episodes were, we thought about the people that were the most um, likely to hit the mark mm -hmm. of the episode, you know, because... We don't really do anything at random. We, we like to be very intentional. The only thing that wasn't intentional, even though I called it, was Nelly's involvement. But for the most part, we were really intentional. We really knew that our guests were going to be representing the show, the theme, and the emotions, and the humor, and the tenderness. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wish we could have had, you know, 10 episodes or, or 15 episodes and, and, and feature everybody that I want to, but there can always be season two and season say, three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And you are already writing season two. Is that right? A hundred percent. I'm always writing it. And yeah. so, I mean, there's a lot of like ridiculous things that happen to us and we just look at each other and then we just go season two, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I so I now I hope that, uh, just out of control things happen so I can write about them. Yeah. And one of the guests also Kitty, Mm -hmm. um, who you've talked about in past interviews about just like have, wanting to do a song with them at one point in time. You had them on the show. You guys kind of wrote a song on the show. Yes. Um, but could we get, do you think that would ever happen? A Lido Kitty song? A hundred percent. We yeah. we thought about doing a, um, a podcast mm. or to do um, a small EP or we always think about, you know, what to do. We're, we're, we're very um, open to collaborating. They, they, they're great collaborators and they are visionaries, you mm -hmm. know, and they've had so much experience in the music industry. And I feel like they are starting to play shows again and I can't wait to see them live again and um, continue on this journey with all of the artists because 
there's a lot of good art here mm -hmm. and Lido TV is just a little window into all the things that we are. Yeah, and I felt that too. Like I, I listened to Hallucination, and I know that Bear has this thing with toys and action figures and things. But to actually see him like talk about it, and for you to have a conversation and it be on a platform like that, I'm like, oh, I love this. Like it's, it's really, really great. Especially awesome. because he doesn't really talk. Yeah, right. He's like He's a quiet little little bear. He, yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Okay, I want to talk about the fact that you are the creator, writer, producer, and host of the show, which I feel like you could almost pick and choose if you wanted to. But you're doing, you're really just doing all of it, and uh, you do have such an incredible incredible work ethic it seems like in everything that you do where do you think that comes from um I'm an immigrant you know I'm an immigrant I, I come from not the most privileged background you know a lot of people depend on me I feel responsible for a lot of people um even though they don't push anything onto me I do feel like someone from my community I'm specifically speaking about the YU territory in the north coast of Colombia that you know if i have these opportunities that i really need to be professional you know i don't like to to slack um and i am a workaholic and creating gives me joy and um i don't understand the i i, I don't i don't understand not doing things at a hundred percent you know and i feel like it keeps me young and it keeps me exciting and it keeps me curious and I'm so curious about everything around me. I want to learn about it and I want to share that experience. So, yeah, I mean, it's no um, secret that when you are a woman, just because you're a woman, you have to fight harder to get heard. If you add a layer, you add the layers of race, or queerness or religion or whatever it is, it makes it even harder, you know? So to me, I just want to be recognized as an artist, period. I don't want people to see me or, oh, you're an X, Y, Z, and that's why we're gonna give you this, no. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want people to see me and the first thing that they recognize in me is my artistry. So I feel like that's why it works so hard because I want that to come through first and foremost. And um, I want to leave a legacy behind me, you know, and I want the legacy to start with A, uh, capital A for art. Yeah, totally. What do you want the main message to be for the people that watch the show? What do you want them to take away from it? You know, Lido TV is a variety show with a twist. Yeah. With surprises. Um, I just want people to know that the more themselves that they are, the more that they're gonna enjoy their lives and to be open, to open their third eye <laughs> into other people's experiences and to enjoy, to enjoy their life and learn as much as they can. Yeah, and it always seems like with your music and everything that you do, because you do so many different different things that there you are very outspoken when it comes to politics and and of social justice and all of these things how do you feel about certain artists that have a huge platform that don't use it for that or maybe just like push products rather than push like things that are going on in the world I mean everyone has to do what they're comfortable with um, I definitely critique it when you have enough money to buy a small country and you have enough power and influence and you don't use it but you know, everyone has their own journey. Um, that could never be me. Mm -hmm. That could never be me. And, and in my universe, you know, our platforms mean something. And, and being um, followed by a lot of people, it means something. Um, it would be great if people would recognize their power. And it would be great if people wouldn't be afraid of losing um, a privilege or losing um, respectability. I feel like a lot of people are still stuck in the old ways mm -hmm. that you have to obey some kind of like please master, everyone. yeah, you know, or please everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of and and it is a reality, you know, like social media can be so toxic and it can make you very insecure. So I can also understand how people with these huge platforms won't use them because at the same time they are people. And having millions and millions of followers does not necessarily mean that you're the smartest person. So some of these people that have the t millions and millions of followers, maybe it's best if they don't say anything <laughs> because they don't know anything, you know. Right. So to each their own. And um, I feel like I can speak about the things that affect me confidently. I try not to talk on things that I have no idea about. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
yeah, I mean, to each their own, but I feel like if you can do it, go for it. You yeah. know, take the risk and stand up for something because it's important because global warming is real. Yeah. <laughs> and we want to be able to drink water at the river for many, 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 many centuries to come, you know, mm -hmm. for future generations. So that's why I do it. Yeah, and I feel like speaking out about things too, it can come with backlash too, which I think for some people that's a harder thing to deal with. You're no stranger to getting backlash for things that you talk about. I know like Alex Jones came after you, yes. which is such a huge, how do you feel now knowing that he's like kind of getting, like he had to go to court and like all of these things and he's like kind of facing some consequences for his actions finally? I enjoy every minute of his demise <laughs> yes, because he is the architect of his own demise, mm -hmm. you know, and he was picking on me and seeing how vulnerable I was. Um, but in the end, all the monsters fall. Mm -hmm. In the end, when you do things from evil and deceit, when you're fake, it all comes down crashing. So, you know, I'm the perfect example of that, of of being lied to and used and manipulated. But I always keep positive and I always keep, you know, with my head in the game and focused um, because in the end, everything comes out to the light, you know? And I, and I like to always talk about the light and so many of my songs talk about the light um, and I want to be a light, you know? So, sorry, Alex Jones. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> but you did this to yourself. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. How, is it hard to keep that positive attitude? Does it take extra energy? Oh, 100% because I'm as much as a hater as everyone else. Yeah. You know, like I'm no little angel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I sometimes feel like I'm the Colombian Larry David. Like the way that the tiniest things bug me that won't, no one cares about. Like I have an obsession with people that wear flip-flops at the airport. Like, mm. I think that is the highest insult that you can <laughs> give to your fellow citizens. Like, why? And especially when the flip-flop is disintegrating. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. No, you're not okay. And yeah. why? Are you sitting next to me? Yeah. No, you're not. Right. And then no, they take it out of the flip-flop? Police. Police. <laughs> I don't even believe in the police. And I'm like... Yes, call 911 right now. Biohazard suit, bring it, please. Yeah. No one else cares. I'm the only one that notices. And I travel so much. Right. I have to go on tour so much. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> I feel like my BTSD is starting to come right now because I just saw someone's toe. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm no little angel. Totally. Talk about using your platform. You, you can use your platform for that. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Wear socks. <laughs> Close shoes. Thank you. Awesome. And on that note, thank you so much for being <laughs> here. I appreciate it so much. So nice to talk to you. Thank you so much.